Um, you know, good, uh, good evening to you. Nice to have you with us, sir. Um, the blame game, as we mentioned at the beginning, continues um, around specifically the hospital attack. What are you, firstly, before we get into some other issues around this, what are you making of that? It's clear what's happened there. You know, I, first of all, important to say it took two hours to the Israeli Defense Forces to announce what happened. Regardless of what Hamas said five minutes after that this is Israel, Israel investigated. And after an investigation that started and announced after two hours but continued the entire night and was announced here in the UK 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, it was clear by many evidence that this is not an Israel fire. And we know from the past, and I believe in it, that if the IDF was uh, responsible for that, uh, it would take the responsibility. But it's clear that uh, uh, the Jihad did it, uh, the, terror, the, the terrorist organization in Gaza. But for my, my, my main takeaway is not actually uh, the blame that they, that, that they didn't take. It's that it took Israel around three days, almost three days, to announce that there was 500 uh, citizens that, that, that had been murdered in the terror attack last Saturday. For Hamas, it took five minutes. They say 900. Today, they say 450. And I have to say clearly, I do not believe the health association in Gaza because the health association in Gaza is part of this terror organization. So how the world, including the BBC and many other channels that say, that speak about the high standards of journalism, are able to send after five minutes this notification. And I still see over the media the same thing that Israel blaming and Hamas is blaming. No, Israel is not, is not blaming. Israel did investigation and show what were the results of it. And for me, it's very sad it's very sad to see that how the war again and again mm -hmm. don't they count for Israel blood and for the blood of Jewish people. Because on the 8th of October, one day after the terrible massacre by Hamas last week, last Saturday, there was actually a rocket shot by Hamas to Ashkelon, to the hospital in Ashkelon. And I have to say, I haven't seen any condemnation, not that by BBC, that actually do not call them yet a terror organization. They think that they are freedom fighters, that going and murdering and raping and burning babies alive, but this is... Of course, everything that is against Israel and against, uh, of course, Jews is something that they are happy to do. The, the Palestinian ambassador, in, in response to the hospital attack, said it was lies. Um, he suggested that everyone from Joe Biden um, and all ranks, and if you like, in between, are essentially just lying. What you are saying now, he would say, is just a basic lie. He says, where's your evidence? When the Palestinians show the truth, I have to say, in all the history that we have, Israel is a democratic country. It's a country that has a free of speech, a freedom, and of course, if any journalist, and there are many, uh, many news in Israel that are happy to attack the government. We do it and we saw it in the last few months, especially right now, against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his right wing government. But speaking about them, there is, isn't even not one uh, news channel in Israel or any newspaper that mentioned that this is wrong. And if it was, I'm telling you, and with 100% confidence, that Israel yeah. would take responsibility for that. What do you make of the, uh, the Lebanon point? We just talked to our correspondent, Tom. Uh, Lebanon are warning against aggression against Gaza. Uh, they say it could spark, I, I quote, fire that could consume the whole region. And as Tom, our correspondent in Tel Aviv, was just telling us, uh, I mean, this would make what happened over the last week look like a bad warm-up to events that could escalate? It's, uh, it's more complicated than understanding the entire region, and I will try to explain it briefly. Uh, Iran tried to create an Islamic caliphate all around the Middle East, North Africa, and hopefully if they would wish and achieve their goals, they would also achieve here and get here to the United Kingdom, and far and far beyond that. Uh, they already have the proxies of the Hamas terror organization in Gaza, they have Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Iraqi forces they, in Yemen, and more and more. And as happened in the past, the Hezbollah was empowered and funded and supported by Iran for many years. And unfortunately, they got a, a massive power uh, that, uh, on the one hand, and I agree with Tom, the correspondent, if there will be a war with Lebanon, it will be uh, a big tragedy. But on the other hand, if there will be a war in Lebanon, it will be the end of Hezbollah, similar like what's happened with Hamas. Because I think we all woke up, both the Israeli society and also people around us, I'm a peace activist, that is my background. I did it for six years and I have 1,000 people around the Middle East that believe in the same reasons. But I'm here not because I'm fighting the Palestinians. I'm here because today we all understand that we are fighting Islamic Jihad, the radical messages that started with ISIS and continue to Hamas. And if we will not stop it, it will not just be around Israel borders. Sure, so this is not the, with the Palestinian people. 
this is Hamas. This, this is the nothing, system, I have, the, the, the government. Yeah, I have nothing against the Palestinian people. Nothing against them. I have even friends, Palestinians, but they, they are not the issue. That's why for the Palestinian ambassador in, in, in the UN, I would say, why you wouldn't go to Gaza? And you know, he will not tell it the truth, but the Palestinian Authority was thrown out for Gaza. PLO, which was the controller in Gaza until 2006, until the elections there, they are the one who was controlling. Then all the activists, all their employees were thrown out from the, from the roof of Gaza. They all been killed and murdered by Hamas. So they can declare on the new end that Israel is blamed for what happened last week. But I want to see him visiting Gaza. And of course, he would not do it. One of the ongoing issues around this, as you will be aware, is about this word proportionality, as to whether n nobody is going to defend what happened on October 7th and the massacre, the terror attack by terrorists that occurred on that day. The response to that, many see as disproportionate. Many see that this will be Israel losing the moral high ground. What do you say to that? First of all, I think about nine of my friends that I lost during the battle. And I speak from my heart. My heart is bleeding right now. Thinking about them, about their families, they have young kids. They've all been murdered by Hamas. And they're not alone. They're unfortunately, we have more than 1,300 citizens and soldiers that have been killed and been slaughtered. And I want to give an example. This is Kfir. He's six months old. This is a baby that was kidnapped by Hamas. He's still held by Hamas right now. This baby should not be held by any army, and of course, not the one who called himself Freedom Fighters, the Hamas terror organization. And what we see today is having fear. We have Aviv, two years old, baby. We have Ariel, who is uh, four years old, and we have Raz. And this is just part of 200 Israelis who have been held right now by Hamas. And I'm speaking from the blood of my heart. I don't know what to say, but when the BBC cannot call them terror organization and give them legitimacy as they call them militants. We don't have any other options, but of course, first of all, saying the truth about it. And second, I haven't heard about any army that holds kids as the hostages. Uh, and when, if there is any army like that, that we need to say the truth that this is Hamas, an enemy that is worse than ISIS, we should destroy this because if not, not just the Israeli people will be threatened, also the entire world. Uh, and for me, it's very clear. And speaking about proportionality, I think the proportion is very clear. Israel should do it not just for ourselves, it's also for the Palestinian society. There is two million people holding as a hostages by Hamas. This is Palestinians. They did nothing, but they are the one who, who held as a human shield. And Hamas put them and they decided, Hamas decided to build his headquarters behind Shifa Hospital, not because he's a militant group, because he's a terrorist organization that builds his compound inside schools, use and we just been published in the news that they, that they steal from the UN, uh, UNRWA Association, uh, many other means that were supposed to support the Palestinian people, but they don't care about Palestinian people. They're happy that they will die. They have one goal, and this is destroying Israel. And that's why Israel is a country, and I think this is why Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, and of course, President Biden, and more and more uh, leaders in the Western world understand and believe that although we have a complicated fight against this terrorist organization, we should destroy it because it's a threat for the Western world, for, the, for civilization, and for democracies.